Hokey Cokey back online with any luck. So how are we all doing? Happy to have a chat in the chat. Going to go for a slow form stream here where I just talk about uh, how my last few days have been, answer a few questions, but I'm not going to try and uh, share my screen at all because uh, I've had some issues. Um, but hi again, Brian. Yeah, I thought I'd better, you know, I've said there's going to be a stream now. I'm going to stream for at least 15, 20 minutes, answer some questions, generally be here. So basically, there's a big change with the, uh, well, not a particularly big change, an anticipated change with the RPG, which is that Sam is going to be taking over the RPG from me so that I can move on and do the machine learning and the Python and the maths that everybody has been asking for for so long. Also, Sam is just super keen to get into it. He really wants to do it. So I want to hand it over to him before I make too many more decisions about it and he loses uh, what I would call ownership of the project. So that's really exciting. Uh, Sam will be, I don't know how much streaming he'll be doing. I can't guarantee he'll be doing as much streaming as I will, but this is the way that we're going to get the RPG part two course, which is what really matters, out on Udemy um, as quickly as possible because the streaming is, um, it is helping me, but it's also slowing me down a bit. So that's cool. Um, what else to tell you? Um, up next in this stream series, probably going to be Tuesday, as I said, next one, as soon as I've confirmed with Sam. He's away for the day. He's in Kew Gardens, which is very nice with his, uh, with his parents-in-law. Uh, I've been to Udemy Live, which is where I went to San Francisco for three solid days um, and uh, mixed with other Udemy instructors, which was great fun. So that's, that's all new and that was good and we learned a lot and uh, had a few questions come up. There's been a really good Facebook poll, I'll post it in the, in the chat, about uh, use of mobiles. The, one of the big pushes from, um, from Udemy were that they think that people spend a lot of their time on mobile, but, uh, but I'm not sure that you guys do. So here's the poll if you didn't see it. It's on the Unity Facebook group. Um, I've also added, oh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze, I'm going to mute while I sneeze. Oh, you wouldn't want me doing that in the mic. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've got loads of items on my stream checklist to, to prevent similar things happening in future, but not really sure what happened. Also, that sort of handshake and authentication failures. I suspect it might be, um, might be from Mike streaming in on my key. Maybe, maybe it's spooked Twitch. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know what else it could be, actually. It might be the ingest server. London is broken but I'm very sorry about the, the issues. Uh, we've got some new emoticons I wanted to show you. Have a look in the emotes panel. Uh, what are the new ones? We've got a duck. One of the duck was from one of our students on the community site who made a duck in, as part of the 2D course, the, uh, the GIMP course. So that's the link to the GIMP course, of course. Made this cute little duck. Um, I think it caught my eye because it sticks out of its own border. You know, in graphic design, it's quite interesting when something, uh, when something breaks its own rule, it's pretty interesting. We've also got Godot and Blender and a handful of others now on the emotes. I'm not brave enough yet to do emotes for uh, Unity or Unreal. Uh, they're big commercial companies. I think that I need to get their permission before I put emotes in from them. So that's why you're not seeing those engines in there. Any other emotes you want, let me know in the comments. That would be really awesome. Uh, that would be cool. Um, yeah, so the, the conversation around mobile is about mobile consumption of courses. If we could structure some of our course content so that it was more able to be taken casually, imagine on the tube, on the bus, on the, on the subway, in the car, on the, on the toilet even. Um, if you could do that without having to be at your computer in engine and we were to defer some of the exercises that you need to do in engine, uh, how interested would you be in that? Um, so Rick's asking in polls and of course most people are saying, well, they don't use mobile, uh, but I also want to check that, you know, that's partly because our courses are very much under the assumption you're sitting right there at your computer. But if we were to explain general concepts, if we were to use more quizzes, if we were to uh, help you organize what you need to do when you get back to the computer, how do you feel about the idea of, uh, of being able to consume content more often in more places on mobile and then going back to the computer once or twice a week? I'd be interested. Um, so. I'm just going to keep an eye on the chat now. Thank you very much for being here. While I was away, we had a slight decline in subscribers on the channel, which was disappointing. But what was, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, what was cool is that we, uh, I got an increase in tier three subscribers. So that's, that's great news. So um, good to hear. Um, so thank you for that. And look forward to the other tier threes being in at six o'clock, which is in about an hour and uh, two hours and 10 minutes time. We've got another stream. I think it's all going to work fine now, now that everything's logged back in again. Uh, and all the authentications fixed up, so that should be good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Rick's Get It Done course sounds like a good candidate, Brian. You're quite right, actually. The Finish It course would be a good candidate. In fact, I'll relay that to them uh, right now. That's a, that's a really uh, valid uh, point, basically. 
Um, so yeah, uh, anything that needs a focus on anything but concepts themselves will need to be done on the desktop, not a phone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just that we're quite light on concepts because we assume that you're always right there with your computer open, but it is a bit of a barrier to entry, right? Yep, board game course as well, Mark, good point. Um, hadn't, hadn't thought of that. So there's a couple of courses that we could, uh, well, I mean, you can already take them on mobile, right? Um, but it's a question of, as we make courses in future, how we talk about it and, uh, and how we discuss the idea of, um, of taking it on mobile where you consume the content. So thanks for those suggestions. Good. How are you, Mark? I hope you've had a good time while I've been away. It feels like I've been away forever, uh, but of course I haven't been away forever. But uh, that's that. Uh, so I've got to decide, um, I know this isn't RPG content, I'm pausing purposefully on the RPG content while we wait for Sam to finish the Unreal VR, which he's been working super hard. Um, here's the link to the course. He has been putting a huge amount of time and effort. It's one of our highest quality courses. Even if you're not into um, Unreal or VR, then there's a lot of C++ and general coding knowledge in there. Um, Anyway, Bindi saying, asking how code works outside of the environment and a quick Google searches could reinforce it. I like the way slides are organized. It would help reinforce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, Mark, you're fighting off a cold. Um, green tea. Yeah, green tea might, ha might help with a cold. Uh, the placebo of your choice. I think we generally have to wait once. It's wait, wait and sleep and take lots of fluids once you've got a cold, I think is a general thing. Brian, thanks for starting to cheer already, although you probably left the stream because of the issues. Um, oh no, you haven't, you're still here. Thanks for starting to cheer. There's a whole new cheerleader board. They start on the first of the month. Uh, so Terravice and Bindi and, and others were up at the top last month. Um, I don't know if I can get the historical information. I'll find out right now. If I can get historical cheerleader board information on my uh, Twitch dashboard. Or well, better just check it, take a look at how this stream's looking while I'm there. It's okay. Kind of a dreamy white background, but that's part of the fun. Uh, so what's happening here is I'm streaming straight off the camera, straight from the camera with its little streaming box, uh, straight to the web. So my computer is not involved at all here, which is uh, a bit of fun and a bit new. It does mean we could take it outside and do all sorts of fun things uh, in the future. Google rabbit holes. Yeah, you can certainly end up down a rabbit hole when you spend too much time on Google, for sure. Um, so what I want to do for you guys, as, I've, uh, as, I've, uh, as I'm not delivering on the RPG today, is to, because of the technical issues I've had, is to just do it a bit of an ANA, a, a bit of a small circle AMA. Normally when we haven't asked me anything, it's huge. Uh, and loads of people are there and, uh, and nobody really gets a word in edgeways. So guys, just ask me anything in the next 15 minutes and I'd love to just answer general questions about the business as a whole, game dev as a whole, take your suggestions, uh, et cetera, because it's a great time for us to recap and, re, uh, and revisit now that we've just, I've just come back from Udemy Live. So go ahead, slam in the chat any questions you've got. Uh, that would be awesome. If anybody would like to dive in and ask any specific questions on, uh, on Zoom, I'll do that for you as well as just a one-off in the next 15 minutes. So if there's something you're dying to show or ask uh, and you're not a tier three subscriber, then you could dive on Zoom, but only in the next 15 minutes, because I just want to give back a little bit, given that this stream, the RPG stream that you've, some of you um, have uh, set yourselves up to watch has kind of failed today. So, um, am I familiar with Ray Wenlich, high quality programming tutorials? No, I'm not. Um, so presuming he's good or you wouldn't be recommending it. Um, what's, the, what's the thought there on Ray Wenlich? Is this just a different format? What, what did you want to point out, Perceptual? Thanks for bringing it up, by the way. Um, it looks like a good, uh, like, look, a good website, well organized. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to see what the deal there is. It's, uh, it's a subscription-based tutorial thing, uh, $14 a month, etc. Okay, so start answering some questions while we get perceptual to, to uh, uh, elucidate that. Um, <clears throat> it was also got to help your eldest with source tree and Godot. Good luck. It's great that your kids are into Godot, Mark. Cool engine, hey? Are you still pl punishing, uh, planning on covering our game via Steam or any other platforms? Do you mean um, the RPG? In which case, it is our intention to do basic coverage of stream uh, of to Steam, yes, because that was the that was the original idea. So Rick and uh, and and Sam should be picking that up. Really looking forward to seeing where they where they take it. Um, I Austin Swifty has what I consider the best content on the web. Oh, cool. All right, so that's good to know. Um, yeah, I haven't looked. It would be interesting to, to take a leaf out of the book. We're not covering yet iOS, but I think that we will start to look at um, start to look at that in the future. Start to look at the idea of uh, specifically Unity to iOS and, and Unreal to iOS, probably as separate streams, 
uh, talking to Rob Percival, I don't know if any of you have taken Rob Percival's courses, one of the biggest Udemy instructors. He, uh, he's a friend of mine and I'm talking to him about the idea of working together on iOS as well. So many things to do, so little time. What we really need to do is work out what you guys are most desperate for next after the RPG. So the RPG is going to be in Rick and Sam's hands. Uh, Blender is firmly in Mike's hands. I've got some leeway between maths, uh, Python and machine learning. And really there's an obvious order there, the correct order in a way, but, it, but there are lots of ways of doing this. The correct order is to go uh, maths first, and then, then Python, then machine learning in terms of your learning. But um, you don't have to take a, uh, you know, an academic bottom-up approach like that. We can do a machine learning overview, whet your taste for it, get excited about what machine learning, specifically uh, reinforcement learning and AI agents. Um, we can whet your appetite for that, and then we can cycle back into the deeper stuff as it's needed. So that's cool. Um, Brian, you find, uh, yeah, so, so Brian, when you're saying you find Rob a better instructor than his partners, um, is that what you're saying? That's, uh, I think so, and that's probably true. I mean, Rob has partnered with a lot of people, but it's hard to vet people uh, and make sure they're the same quality, right? Uh, so Bindi's asking, will we, uh, will we consider selling a separate offering to become a lifetime member? Um, you know, not at the moment still, Bindi, we still haven't organized that. We're probably going to end up with a membership offering though, where, you, where we have a, um, an offering that you can have for a monthly fee, all of our courses. But we're already doing this with tier three subscription, which I notice you are now. So thank you very much for doing that. We, um, we might roll lifetime membership, something like lifetime membership into, into the tier three. Um, need to look at all this. So that right now the focus is on just doing, set, setting up to record the next big winner courses for between now and the end of this year, whilst delivering all our current promises. So we're kind of, number one, we need to deliver on current promises, which is finish the RPG, which is totally in hand, um, and make sure that Jan is supported in finishing Godot, and he's going great guns in the Godot course. The, the Heistmeisters is just amazing. For instance, the latest game, it's got a tutorial in it. It's just, it's just a fun, like, real game. So big shout to Jan for that. So a major initiative of everybody but me is to deliver on what we've already promised we're going to do. A major initiative for me in the next few months is to, is to find the next thing that both you guys are keen on, but also to go out and find some new community and bring them in and mix you guys together. So that is the maths, Python, machine learning type arena. So um, once that's done and once Twitch is stable and live and, and, and growing, you know, because it's going to take a lot of energy to keep Twitch growing in the early days, then we'll start thinking about um, either membership, as in our own site, or YouTube as the next major initiative, first thing next year. So when will the next Kickstarter be, Bindi? Uh, I would like it to be fairly soon, because I'd like to, to, to go into another major area, but we need to make absolutely sure that the RPG is firmly on track and that, that Godot is firmly on track before we start another Kickstarter. So, you know, I don't want too many outstanding promises, so hopefully that answers. Um, uh, Dr. Ro uh, Robert Robot Vinick. Do Robot Vinick. Oh, cool. Cool name. Okay, so MLB stuff, be Keras or TensorFlow with Unity. So what we're planning on doing is pretty cool. We're going to make a... So, so one example, this is an example of a, of a, of a machine learning or a reinforcement learning journey, would be self-driving cars. You could make an entire course on that or we could, put multi we could just have one section on it. But just imagine it's self-driving cars for a minute. What we would have, and I've already de-risked de the possibility of this, we'd have a game running. Now that game could have been created in Unity, it could have been created in Unreal. It could be a commercial game like Carmageddon with the blood turned off or something. We're going to reach out to a few people. But a car game, for example. And that's a running process sitting here on your machine. Then over there, we're going to do the machine learning the, the standard way. We're going to use uh, Python as a language. There's two choices, really, Python and R. We're going to go down the Python route. It's more related to game development. It's more related to Godot. So we go down the Python route. Um, and we'll use whatever libraries like TensorFlow are most appropriate to the way we're doing things. So you'll have one process running in here in Python, TensorFlow, et cetera, and then the, unit, the, the game executable here. They can actually talk to each other using something called Google Protocol Buffers. I might whip out a tiny course called The Language Barrier, which talks about how do you have two separate processes running and actually have them talk to each other, even though they're in completely different languages. Well, Google Protocol Buffers, I can give you a link to that. It's pretty cool. It takes a bit of getting your head into. Um, and I've already de-risked that and looked at it, and uh, this is something that's a bit of fun. That combined with Google RPC, Remote Procedure Call, means you can actually talk between two different languages. So there's a link for you. So what would happen then is that the, the, 
the, the, the simulator, call it a car game, you know, you'd normally control it with your keyboard and mouse, your joystick, your, your whatever. The job of the ML agent would be to remotely control that game. Now, in going to a car game, you only need two inputs, really. Steering from minus one to plus one, and then accelerator stroke brake from full accelerator to full brake. Again, just two floating points, minus one to plus one. Two of those updated maybe 15 to 30 times a second is enough to drive a car. Going out from the simulator, the game over to the machine learning, uh, you've got a whole array of things could come out. Number one, the simplest could just be, what's my distance from the centre line? Okay, it's kind of cheating, but it's the most simple starting point, right? It's just a for loop to keep the car in the on centre line. Then you could start getting more complicated and saying, well, let's not give that information, but let's just give the splines of the edge of the road, for example. Or let's give the distance to the nearest object, and then, and then building up the data like that. At the end of the day, the end goal, the very hardest end goal, would be throw out just the pixels from the simulator, just the camera view basically, first person camera view sitting on the car and work it out from there. So it's kind of taking the problem of how a self-driving car works or in general whether it's a self-driving car any agent, the end goal would be that the ML agent only uses what it can see visually. That would give you the most authentic experience in, the, in a game but also the hardest to deal with, right? the hardest to program. And if you think what they do, they, they take the pixels, they try and put bounding boxes around things, recognize those things, tag those things, work out the distances and movement vectors of those things, and go all the way down to, 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 to a mathematical representation. But the great thing about a game engine is it already has the mathematical representation of the world inside it. So as you learn the harder and harder ML, you can just expose less and less of that mathematical representation until you get down to the, to the pixels. That's the general idea of, a, of, a, of an ML journey. So it'd be pretty cool. Uh, don't need to kickstart the RPG part two, Bindi. Nice idea, but I really feel like we'd be over kickstarting then. We've already done a kickstarter. People have already paid to have the full scope of the RPG. It is our intention to deliver on uh, the, the majority of those promises. You know, give us, give us, um, well, at least 80, 20. Maybe, maybe we'll do better than that. Maybe 95, 5 on the promises. You know, we sometimes a few things, they're not really slipping, but we adjust because there's sometimes 5% of things that if we were to do them, they're not adding much value and people aren't that interesting, interested, they're very interesting, and they would take us a huge effort. But we aim to get most of the promises finished. So I'm not going to re, re kickstart. Nice idea, but that would be a bit crazy. Um, so, Bindi, I think if you're talking about being decoupled, um, I'm not, yes, yeah, sorry, they're not de decoupled in a way. So there will be a second course, but they're not de uh, um Decouple. Brian, I spent time with Penny DeBille and Udemy Live. One of my intentions for going there was to go and meet Penny and it would be great to work with her. So we are talking to her at the moment about the possibility of her uh, co-authoring a course with us. So it's kind of game dev style tied into the community where the best of both of the ways that we and her do it. Um, wheels in Unity in general house because of the physics underneath. Yeah, so the interesting thing about a car, right? A car is a classic um, object orientation class. It's a classic object. It uh, has a very simple incoming API, just steer and throttle, as I said before. Throttle, stroke, brake. I don't know, what's the combined word for throttle, stroke, brake? Steering and going, or <laughs> go stopping, or whatever. I don't know what the combined word is. Um, anyway, uh, that's the API into a car. Of course, the state of a car, a simple 2D car, if you like, is, um, is its, its position and its velocity, but the interaction between the two inputs and its position velocity is hugely interesting and, and, and complex and uh, trying to get a car to like drift or skid around just based on those two inputs is a huge amount can happen based on how the weight has shifted and what the surface is and what the suspension's doing. So yeah, Mark, huge, hugely interesting cars. And trying to create a model of, for, for an agent like us as a driver or an ML agent to try and work out effectively an internal model of how that car's working is pretty interesting. Uh, you know, one way to do it is to simulate the physics of the car, but you've got to do that in reverse if you want to work out how to drive a car. So that's pretty cool. Um, you've repeatedly tried to get a Micro Machines game but can't get the car to, cars to stop sliding. Have you, uh, Mark, looked at Battle Tank in the, um, in the Unreal course at all? Because especially now that Sam has gone and fixed the physics issues at the end of that, do have a look at Battle Tank. It's got, had a massive recent update to the end of that section only a month or so ago. So, is ML through these protocols and remotes possible to wrap up the game if you were to re release it, for instance? So, uh, Robot Vinix, so it's a, what we're doing here is we're using um, games to train ML agents rather than ML to create games in this case. It's a, it's a step away from what we're normally doing, which is creating games. We're saying, no, let's do what DeepMind do and use games to train ML agents. If you want to use the same type of knowledge to put ML agents in your game, 
Um, good question. What I haven't tried is, for instance, I don't think so. I think that Unity is going to create an executable and that we're not going to be able to bundle like a Python executable inside that. And that any average user is not going to want to have to run two games at the same time or two executables to get the effect. But often, the ML stroke AI is done in the cloud. And one of the cool things about Google protocol buffers is it includes security and can be run over the web. So what you could have is you could ship a game to people that runs on their local machine, but you could employ, just like the Xbox One does on some games, Forza 5, I believe, does this. You could employ ML agents in the cloud to join in as, for example, NPCs, which would be pretty cool. So you'd send the mathematical representations of the world up the web to an ML agent, which can run in Python, TensorFlow, whatever else and then it can send you commands back to, a, to an NPC. So yes, in that respect, you absolutely can do that. You just wouldn't be trying to run them both on the same executable, or on two separate executables on the same machine, just because of the logistics of running that and packaging it for Steam, etc. if that makes sense. So, uh, Perceptor, is Rick going to forward on the RPG? Yes, he absolutely. So what's happening is that the main thing the RPG needs is uh, technical work now. It needs us to get the structure of it right with Rick diving in occasionally. So that's what's happening with me at the moment is Rick and I are talking about once a week on the RPG and it takes me about a week to put the features he needs into place and then we check in with him. All that's going to happen is it's going to swap me out for Sam and then I'm going to plow ahead in new fields. Sam's going to do that. And, uh, and as soon as Rick has finished the remastering, he will then be full time on the RPG, which will hopefully be about the right time because it will be then that the content, uh, it desperately needs to be put to it in the story, etc. As for who records the rest of the RPG, it's going to be at least 50% Rick, could be as much as 80-90% Rick, uh, and we'll have some or none of me and almost certainly Sam in it as well. So downhill skateboard game, goofy downhill skateboard game sounds fun. Um, what do you think of this stream format, by the way, guys? Um, occasional streams where there's just no screen. It's just straight up camera. Because I could do this anywhere. In fact, if it, does it all have batteries? 90% of what I'm using has batteries, not the camera. If I was to stick a, camera, a battery in the camera and spin out my little screen, let me see if I can see what I'm seeing. I could do this anywhere. I could be in the garden. I could be whatever. Oh, let me just check something. Hang on. I think you can still hear me, but I don't think you can see me. For just two seconds, I want to just try something. What do you think of this format? Because we could do more interesting, more informal chats pretty much anywhere uh, in this format. It's a bit rubbish, though, because for me, because I can't see most of the screen. It's got a big, thick HDMI cable, bit of a bad design right over the screen. But we get the idea. I can see that I'm looking all right. Um, obviously, watching the screen is better most of the time, but what do you think? Fireside chats, exactly. Uh, yeah, so Irresistible Jelly, Mark needs to get back to the RPG, um, sorry, the Unreal course at some point. I got slightly uh, sidetracked. I'll go up one by, um, in fact, I'm going to go up two or three. So Bryant, thinking of a downhill skateboard game, cool. Um, Perceptual says that Battle Tank updates Sam did were top notch. Uh, good, great. Uh, Sam does do stuff that's top notch, so I'm glad to hear that, and thank you for saying so. I will, uh, I'm actually going to just s grab that and just tell him that because I think that it will be really, uh, really nice for him to see that because he works really hard. Great work ethic, great work from Sam. So I'm going to tell him that straight, a straight away. And uh, on t what I'm doing is pacing into Slack. I'm just going to give him a, uh, a quick clap. There you go. So he'll be at Kew Gardens receiving that and being pleased um, about that. Okay. Cool. What else do we have? Uh, so yeah, do get back to Unreal, Mark. That would be cool. So Brian, uh, the ML uh, KR back to my sniper game idea. Tell us more about that, Brian. What's your idea with a sniper game that involves machine learning or uh, reinforcement learning specifically? That would be cool. Opponent is now a cyborg. That would be cool. Oh, a cyborg, cybernetic sniper that you're fighting against or something. That would be cool. Um, Yeah, um, so the course will be cool. Yes, machine learning is a huge topic. We will, uh, I just need to get myself free uh, of the existing commitments, which is specifically Godot's C-sharp conversion, which I'll be working on over the weekend, and of the RPG. I need a smooth handover. It's like a relay race, right? Holding a baton, running like crazy. You need to kind of stick your hand back and, and hand the baton to the guy behind you and say, here, here, have you got it, you know? And once the smooth handover's uh, taken, I can then move on from there. Uh, so Brian, it works for you better for AMA. That's cool. Uh, as I say, I, could, I don't have to be sitting right here now. I could easily move. I just have to 
I could do that, but there'd be a slight interruption in the video and the audio because I'm pretty sure I can't take the battery out the camera without it stopping. It's a shame. It's where you need a dual battery camera so I can like take the external power out and stick a battery in. But anyway, not for this one, but I will try it some other time. I think I've probably only got about 20 minutes of reliable uh, streaming like that on battery. So because something's bound to go flat, the streaming box, the camera, but we'll try it sometime. Okay, uh, you like it better than the voice AMA, it was a bit chaotic for you. Okay, so are you saying that you prefer me to just answer text questions? My, my concern is that I, um, my concern is that you just get, gotta get bored of my voice eventually. I mean, I do after like five minutes, so. Anyway, if you don't, then that's cool and, uh, and I'm happy. I, the reason I like to bring other people in. Oh, wow, that's weird, on my camera. It's tracking my eyes. It's got these little, it's like it's targeting my eyes. It's really cool. It's going really rapidly, kind of putting crosshairs over my eyes, trying to track my face. It's kind of a bit spooky. Anyway, um, yes, voice AMA, a bit chaotic. I can get that. If you don't mind these formats, we'll do more of them. Perceptual, are you going to take the RPG course in UE4? Am I going to make one in UE4? Not right now, um, but people do ask, and UE4 would be a cool engine for it. Maybe UE4 Blueprint, because I'm really thinking, why use C++ in UE4 now? Why would you use it until you run across an API that you don't, that isn't exposed in, in, in uh, Blueprint? Why would you bother using C++? I just, I don't get it now. I'm really looking into it and thinking, why? I mean, you can even version control Blueprints. You can visually diff Blueprints. They're just as fast. They compile down to unreadable, but, but C++. Um, you just save a lot of time. So I'm really starting to think that we need to teach you Unreal Blueprint because it's a seriously awesome way to make games. Um, so Brian's telling us about his sniper game, which is awesome. Two snipers across a valley trying to find and kill each other. Mm. Maybe ML could make the cyborg learn against the player. Maybe it could. The only, the only thing I would, I would be a little bit hesitant about is um, whether there's enough data against one player. I think that if it was a game that had a lot of players, then it would have a chance of learning generally how to fight against multiple players and then somewhat specializing its behavior against a given player. But if it's just you against one ML agent, I think you might be unimpressed with how fast it learns, certainly with any reasonable amount of ML. Having said that, if you're allowed to put the ML in the cloud and you're allowed to use the latest tech, um, sort of stuff coming out of DeepMind and you're allowed to use a lot of processor and don't mind spending a little bit of money on it, are on the processing, then maybe you could get something that learns and converges on a nice solution pretty quick. So, yeah, it may, may be less chaotic on Discord in the future since the last one I forced push to talk on the server. Yes, thanks for that, uh, Mark. That's probably quite a good idea. Really appreciate you doing that. Perceptual saying, um, Bulvi UE released a RPG demo project. That's cool. Um, we've had, yeah, we have got people following the Unity RPG along in Unreal, which is huge. Uh, well, we add cloud and offer it mobile to everyone and make them compete. Yeah, Brian. Cool. So it uh, sounds really fun, a sniper game. Good luck with that. And uh, we, uh, yeah, I mean, my, my goal is to teach you how, how reinforcement learning works, uh, teach the fundamentals of that. And I, uh, the bit about like making an ML agent in C Sharp I don't know. We'll see when we get to kickstarting stroke syllabus design how much you guys want that, whether you want to learn to train up an, an ML and then take the parameters and dump them into a network that may be compiled down to C Sharp so that it runs inside Unity. That's a possibility. And we can look at all those possibilities later. The first goal is to get something trained and working before we worry about where it, where it brain lives. Um, so... Relcad, why do some people use like five engine to make games? Are you saying um, why do people use so many different engines and why don't they stick to one? Is that your question? If so, just clarify in the chat. I know there's a bit of a delay. I have uh, specifically turned down, uh, turned up the delay recently to reduce buffering. So if that's the question, do let me know. I'm just going to check. Oh, I don't need to use the other screen. It's quite nice here because I can use my main computer screen now and not be worrying about what you guys are seeing on the screen. So. I think for more kind of chatty, chatty streams, it's uh, quite a good idea. Okay, so the reason is that one size doesn't quite fit all. If, there's one, if you have to just, somebody puts a gun to your head and says, you know, which engine are you going to choose? And you have to just go for one engine. For most, most people, you wouldn't do badly just 
settling on unity as your first instant, boom, knee-jerk choice. But it takes a lot, a lot of people a lot longer. Um, oh, not to make one game. Oh, uh, I, so I think you are asking why multiple engines? Because you need to know, you don't know what a game engine is until you've used more than one, basically. And you don't really know how to use it properly until you've used more than one. And you don't know what you're missing from others until you've used more than one. And you don't know um, how much life you're easier or harder your life could be. So I think three is, is a good number. If you want to be a linguist, how many languages do you need to learn to call yourself a linguist? I, I think you would call somebody a linguist when they get to the third language. I mean, as in spoken language, Spanish, French, English. Same kind of deal, I would say, for computer languages and computer engines. I would, I would aim to learn three. And then, not in detail, but in enough that you can make a basic game. Make a basic game in three, and then for every future project, you just decide. You just decide what's right for the job, yeah? Bindi, what would be missing from Unity if you just used Unreal? <laughs> C-sharp, thanks for that, Brian. Awesome. So if you just used Unreal, uh, you would be missing... If you want to code rather than blueprint, you'd be missing uh, zero or very low compilation times. Obviously, C Sharp's just in time. So um, you would be missing rapid code prototyping with written code in, in Unity. The asset store in Unity is pretty amazing. Um, some of the 2D features in Unity are better. Some of the cross-platform support is better in Unity. So, and other things, right? <laughs> yeah, very funny, missing C Sharp. That's really, that's good. I like that. So I think the stream's been solid. Has the stream been, no, apart from the fact I'm not streaming about what I said I was going to stream about, and we had lots of technical issues at the beginning, uh, which were login issues of some description, which I need to dig into. Uh, but apart from that, has the stream been, like, solid? <laughs> and the asset store doesn't have a 3D llama. Well, any asset store that doesn't have a 3D llama, Bindi, is just not worth its, uh, not worth any, its time, is it? I completely agree with you. <laughs> Look, good fun. So I'll take a couple more questions and then I'm going to go and use this opportunity of a shorter stream to get some food in because I realised that I planned not to eat at all today effectively by the way I've organised my day and that's, that's not going to work. <laughs> Jerrion, welcome to the chat by the way. Bulvi, welcome to the chat. Um, great to have you here. Prefabs, yeah, but in, in Unreal you get blueprints. So, and blueprints are, once you get your head around them, they are... Uh, superior to the current prefabs because you've got nesting. You can, you, can, you can do blueprints within blueprints effectively. So, and there's that. What else do you guys have for me, for, for us, really? I'm kind of speaking on behalf of the whole of Game Dev TV. I sound like a, sound a bit corporate here. Oh, I think that's my wife. It's a rumbling sound on the gravel. Don't worry, that's not her walking. She's not that heavy, it's the car. Yeah, blueprints are stronger than prefabs. Again, you guys need to make up your own minds. It's a feeling. You need to... So a lot of these things are about motivation, right? If you've used three engines, I suggest the ones we teach, Godot, Unity, and Unreal, you'll know. Once you've, once you've done a simple project in them, you'll know for a given project what, what you need to reach for. Yeah, I mean, the super amount of... The amount of UI to get used to in Unreal compared to, say, Godot is just massive. And the complexity of writing in C-sharp compared to Godot is just massive. I'm going to say it again, uh, Unity is better than Godot, Unreal is better than Unity, and Godot is better than Unreal. <laughs> and, uh, and what I mean by that is, by the time you've gone around that circle to Unreal, you've really got to zoom back again and go, do I need that for the project that I'm making? If we were making Jan's wonderful Heistmeisters game, next up in the Godot course, I'll give you a link here. If you were making Heistmeisters in Unreal, it would just take longer and be much harder. There'd be a lot more mental um, workload to even understand what you have to do in that, game, in that engine for a simple game like that. So just keep moving forward, keep building games, keep shipping stuff, keep getting feedback from your customers and, um, or your players or yourself if you're not shipping live yet and just really get that diversity of experience. Also into Blender, you know, don't just be a... Um, don't just be 100% a coder, at least get basic block modeling under your, um, under your belt so that you understand how to make minor tweaks to models, you understand what the, de what the designer or artist job involves. If you ask somebody to do a, a designer or artist job for you or you collaborate with them and they say it's going to take weeks, you might understand why, how much work they actually have to do, how hard it is to do good art. So look at Blender, look at the wider picture. In fact, just generally look at, um, 
look at all our courses. The, 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 we, we discontinue courses unless they're great. So they're all there for a reason to help you as indie developers or aspiring people in the, uh, in the job market for game development. Or um, mo not all of the courses, but any of the coding courses are also designed to help you get better at coding in general. So, oh cool. Bindi, I'd like to see that. Post us a link to your chess set moving around inside the 3D section on uh, Project Boost. That, oh, I did see that, actually. I did see that. I think you have shared it. Really cool. Uh, for anything, so Brian's saying, for anything we would make uh, to start any engine will work, but if you want to make the next MMO, well, Unreal seems to have more features for streaming landscape than Unity does. Appealing, um, but way beyond your skill set. Exactly. That's another really valid point, Brian. It's about... Um, if something is pushing you too hard, like Unreal might, then you're not going to get the best out of yourself. It's the peak stimulation curve, right? If you are under-stimulated, then you're not going to give your best work. And if you're over-stimulated, you're not going to give your best work if you're over-stressed. So that's another really important point. It depends on your level. Um, Unreal is objectively just harder than Godot. And as a complete beginner, you're going to have more trouble with Unreal than Godot. And then Unity sits in the middle, in my opinion. Uh, but it's also different on every axis, right? It depends on what you're looking at. Streaming levels is one lens. You know, there's a great book about games, by the way, called A, uh, a Book of Lenses. I'll, get, I'll find you a link on Amazon, actually. Um, and it's a pretty cool way of looking at your... It's called The Art of Game Design, A Book of Lenses, while I mention lenses. And the lens you take on your engine will determine what... Um, will determine which one you should choose. So, controls. Rotate A and D and boost space. I'm playing Bindi's chess game. How cool is that? <laughs> Michael like that. Boom. Yeah, I like it. I am going to share that on our Slack uh, as a fun mashup of um, things. Let me just do that now. Mashup of Michael. And last question then. And and uh, boom. Okay, cool. Well done with that, Bindi from Bindi. Thanks, Bindi. Shared with the team. They will like it. Unity's terrain works on lower spec machines uh, and others. Doesn't anything below GTA 660 has trouble with Unreal? Yes, Unreal does assume a higher level of uh, machine available. Um, specs also affects the decision. Exactly, exactly. And even knowing what factors to consider requires you to have just done a little bit, bit of research and comparison. Otherwise, you just get stuck in this, one, in this one paradigm. So do reach out, keep moving. Basically, whatever you're working on, if it's Unity, and you kind of start grinding to a halt for whatever reason, maybe just try a different engine for a bit. And just keep moving, keep advancing. That's the thing. But also, sometimes, of course, if you get stuck against a problem, sometimes the right thing to do is to just bash at that problem until you solve it. You need to use a bit of your, um, your inner wisdom in order to work out whether you need to be persevering or going round a particular problem. And you'll, you'll know that for yourselves if you're, if you're honest with yourself and do some reflection. All right, I'll be back at 6, which is in an hour and 40 minutes' time. I look forward to seeing... Is it in an hour and 40 minutes' time? It's a bit longer than that, isn't it? It is in uh, 3, 4, 5, in 2 hours and 40 minutes' time. Uh, for Meet the Mentors, episode three, I've sent a, um, a note via Twitch whispers as to where to get hold of us at that event, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, that meeting room is not reserved for us, so in the one in literally 10 million chance somebody else takes that meeting room ID, then we'll, I'll post you a new one during the actual stream. So be ready for that. Um, so let's just think about wrapping up the stream. So uh, the next stream on the channel will be in two hours. The rest of it, look at our events page. Um, the next stream in this series is Undetermined, the RPG series, but it will be Tuesday next week at the latest. Me next, Meet the Mentors for Tier 3 only. Um, anybody can watch. Tier 3 only can join in. Uh, it's in two hours, two, and fo two hours, 40 minutes. Um, remember to use reminders on our channel. Remember to follow us on the channel. Obviously, anybody who's talking in the chat is already following us. Remember to subscribe. Check out the benefits of subscription. There are plenty of them, and I always remember people of, uh, remind people of the Tier 2 benefits, which are there in slightly annoyingly formatted text. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much for being here. I'm glad to be streaming again. Glad it's finally all working. And I will go away, probably have a quick chat with Mikey and see if we can reason about what on earth could have gone wrong there. And yeah, I will see you, see you later. Thanks very much. And uh, for the moment, I'm going to see if I can turn this stream off using a different button, actually. Rather than reaching over rudely into your face, I'm going to see if I can uh, hit a different button. So bear with me while I do that. This is on a web browser. See if this works. Goodbye.